What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and as always, it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. What's got two rubbers, a giant set of balls, and loves to go fast? That's right, last call at a bar, but also super bikes. And while few and far in between, the occasional motorbike game does come along that causes people to sit up and take notice. Today's title is Isle of Man Ride on the Edge, and for understandable reasons, because the game takes the entire Isle of Man race course, puts it into a game, and then asks the age-old question. Exactly how fast can a person be catapulted before they're considered their own motor vehicle? So strap on your helmet, put the kids to bed. Isle of Man comes out March 6th for the PS4 and Xbox One and March 27th for the PC for the suggested retail price of $59.99. Let's see how it did, shall we? If you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe or check out Patreon. So here's my review for TT Isle of Man. Time travel via chromatic arboration, non-existent weight to horsepower ratios, and Chacon the Forever Man as a motorbike racer. And of course, as always, graphics are up first. Now, Isle of Man has a sense of speed. It's almost mystifying, and it's not just the view, though that is great, but it's even in the third-person view. It's just one of the few games that so nails a feeling of grabbing hold of an engine with wheels and seeing just how fast you can tear ass through some town's evacuated roads without becoming a permanent road marker. Even with the camera shake turned all the way down, there's a fantastic feeling of speed here, and when you're going 180 plus miles an hour through the pines, it's hard not to actually be impressed by that effect. And really, when you consider all the games prior, there's only been a couple that have really nailed that. Now, graphically elsewhere, there are some excellent parts. The lighting at times can almost be intoxicating, and when you're smoking it through the back 40 and the sun's creeping through trees, or the fog is thinning out, there's a very tangible feeling of majesty there, which is something that they're aiming for in a motorbike racer. And of course, a lot of this obviously has to go back to the fact that the original location is real, and they replicated the Isle of Man perfectly, as well as the other tracks. Now, each section, or the main track, depending on how you race it, really does look well at different times. You can also choose various times of day to change things up a bit, but I was surprised that they didn't make a real effect. Texture work is pretty well done, as is the complexity of the bikes and their models. Sadly, not everything's full bore in TT. The first is the animation of the riders, which just looks weird. It's like they have 60 movements for a leaning animation, but one through 20 is the rider sitting there looking dumbfounded at the track ahead of him, leaving the other 40 in the shortened time frame, which means you're either not moving at all or you're quick twitching it across the motorcycle seat like a Call of Duty player. It just looks odd. And of course, when it comes to frame rate and micro stutter, there's a little bit occasionally on the Xbox One X, but overall, it was pretty tight and I was actually happy with that. Lastly, there's no real damage system in the game at all, which I guess makes sense because every time you wreck, you're just shambling back to the bike again anyway. And to be honest, unlike some other racing games, motorbikes are usually a one and done affair, especially at these speeds. But it would have been nice to see more evidence of the battle I just rode through to get that hard earned victory. Also, I can't say I was incredibly happy with some of the pop in I was seeing on the consoles. As a package, I think TT Isle of Man is a unique entry. At times, it's actually brilliant looking, and at other times, almost stunningly sterile and lifeless, especially when you're doing a lot of these races and no one else is even near you. Sound, music, and voice. is for those who want to achieve the best time on each circuit. You know what? Let's do music first. There's barely any. What is there is to just usher you through into the main menus and then out of that. And it's in every way remarkable because it's so unremarkable. And it sort of takes a lot of effort to blindly present an audio palette, but they do so with all of the main menus and the main music just being that typical arcade fare. Overall, very forgettable. Sound. This is actually pretty good, and it's got very good sound separation, but it doesn't have a lot of choices when you go into the options. But even with the 2.1 system, you have some excellent audio effects and processing while you're racing, which can really inform you of where other racers are. And while I think the tonal layer on motorbikes is going to be harder to discern for the average listener, there's a good deal of difference between the lower horsepower lean and mean machines and the incredibly high power and high horsepower widow makers that can literally rocket you through the course at unbelievable speed. The best has to be the wind though, complete props for this. When you get up to speed, there is a layered sound effect that whistles up high across your helmet. It is a spectacular effect that really adds to the feeling of speed. Overall, I'd say I like the sound, but the limited number of vehicles of course means a bit more of a measured presentation. 
And of course that brings us to voice. And when it comes down to it, it's just playing in the tutorials or when you first go into the modes and it's there to present you with a bit of information about what's going on. There really isn't much more than that, nor more to the presentation, which is fine because if you're hearing voices, you probably shouldn't be riding one of these super bikes down a garden path at 200 miles an hour anyway. And of course that brings us to gameplay. Isle of Man is pretty much just that. It's a game where you take the various motorcycles out into the Isle of Man circuit or nine other separate tracks and try to make it through them alive. For doing this, you have the career mode, which you can jump into as Johnny Nobody and try to climb the ladder of success while dodging death at every turn. You have online, which allows for you to join or host games of up to eight players, but without crossplay, and local hot seat, which allows for up to eight players to take turns racing the same bit of track. You also have a time attack mode, which is, well, that's pretty much what it sounds like. You can choose between 25 riders and around 38 motorbikes. But there's a good chance you're not going to see anybody on the track anyway, because I think it's best to understand the Isle of Man overall as a race is where riders go out not in packs, but at different times. So it can be a bit of a lonely affair, even if you choose a more mass start option at the beginning of the race, which is allowable. The issue here is that the game really doesn't offer very much. Even in career mode with your email system and little moments of personalization, it doesn't feel like much of anything is going on. Not all titles can be a Forza or a GT or any other game with massive careers. But I admit that due to the fact that the game is already offering you such a limited feature set, I would have loved something like an opponent system or something else that was there or something to build on the presentation. Instead, it's just a couple menus and then jumping into the same tracks. And yes, you can choose between the three times a day, as I said before, but unlike many other games, those also don't really affect your gameplay as much. And I feel that that's a missed opportunity. And speaking of missed opportunities, I have to mention a couple things. First, there's no steering sensitivity adjustment at all. No 1 to 10 or 1 to 100 scale. That's right. A game that's trying to be a motorbike sim with front and rear split braking and all manner of assist doesn't have a general steering sensitivity. In today's day and age with all manner of controllers and customization options and just the desire of gamers to sort of cultivate a feeling in the title, that is a head scratcher, especially when you take into account the dearth of many of the other options as well. And that lack of catering to my driving style or anybody else's instead makes me just feel like I'm calling an Uber and stealing someone's vehicle for a second, riding it and then giving it back. Unfortunately, this also means the sort of arcadey, almost hang on style feel of the game doesn't really ever go away because of the way it interacts, regardless of what options you choose. Now, you may be able to make some changes with the Elite Controller on the Xbox One with your adjustment app, and of course on the PC later, I'm not quite sure what the PS4 will have. Also, the other riders seem far more accustomed to slamming into one another than you are. If you almost touch anyone, boom, you fly off the bike and crash. In fact, it's like the game's just waiting for contact so it can ejaculate the rider into orbit. But I have seen the AI really go heated and Terry Funk in each other in a corner like they're trying to share the same friggin' space time. Nothing occurs at all. Now that doesn't mean they can't wreck because they do. It just means that they have a better grip on the handlebars than you appear to. Now regarding the control, it isn't so bad once you really learn just how different motorbikes are compared to cars and their handling, durability, and even visibility. It's much easier to come ripping around a corner in this game and find yourself sliding right past an opponent you didn't even see was there a moment ago. And one thing to always remember is unlike a vehicle where control comes from the synergy of tires and surface, motorbikes add to that the requirement for a finesse of weight management and leaning, which I really did like. When it comes to difficulty, the game has settings between easy and expert to finesse a bit more detail out of the gameplay, but still, I would have liked a lot more options. I think as a package, TT is sort of a mixed bag. Sometimes arcadey, sometimes simmy, it never really sort of finds its comfort zone. Though it certainly is one of those titles that can have you saying, just one more time, let me see how I can do. Fun factor. As Cole Trickle's manager said right before he sacrificed Nicole Kidman to the space monkey god, Rubbin's racing, but not in TT Isle of Man. It's a little bit more like Rubbin is almost always death, a flinging, swirling bit of death, like the game's wondering if it can single-handedly Elon Musk you into a low altitude orbit at any point. Those moments are also when the game nails its speed. Unfortunately, it is just such a lean overall presentation. And of course, presentation brings us to the rating. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale. This is actually, sadly, a rent. Maybe game fly it, or maybe get it on a deep, deep sale. The game just doesn't offer as much as I would personally like. It's got some adjustments to the settings that I think need to be added, and I would love to see some additions here or there, including more bikes, a more robust career, and certainly a couple more fictional tracks. I think then it could be something special. For now, though, sadly, it's just something. 
So that's it for me. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Maybe check out Twitter or Reddit. And always, if you want, you can become a patron on the Patreon webpage, which absolutely helps me give you guys reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. And remember, I buy every single game that I review. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.